is Joy Reid. At his marathon press conference last week, uh, President Biden said, uh, quote, uh, members of the media, quote, talk about how nothing has happened in his first year. Yeah. And the fact of the matter is we got an awful lot done. Is that a fair complaint by Joe Biden? Because there is a whole lot of talk in the media, no offense, also MSNBC, yeah. about the agenda stalling. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm sure he'd like to get everything done or his, yeah. his base would like to get everything done. What do you make of his first year, and is he right to complain about the description? I think, you know, all presidents complain about the press. You know, President Obama didn't like the press. Not, no, no one really likes the press when you work in politics because you're never going to get the coverage you want. Um, but I think in one sense, Biden has a point. Um, I think that the media, you know, I, I like to say that, you know, the media does have two biases, right, change and conflict. Mm -hmm. Right, so if we see change, we run toward that, and that's interesting. It's just change um, is a new thing to talk about. Change is new. You know, President Obama, that was like an exciting sort of change in, in America's culture and politics. You know, the media will gravitate toward change and conflict. But the media doesn't want to be in conflict necessarily with a president, but the idea of almost like a sports-like conflict between the parties is kind of where the media tends to go. That's not necessarily healthy when we're dealing with, like, the decline of democracy, which is actually not a sporting event, and we should probably take that seriously, and there are two sides and there is one right side to being for or against democracy and I think the media has failed there. But I think also, you know, complicated things like inflation and economics, it's just easier to cover it like a sporting event. Republicans say this, Democrats say that, and to sort of lay things at the feet of the president where he might not be able to do anything about it. I doubt any president can reverse inflation. It's just not a thing they do. So I think that, yes, in a sense, there has been Policy is boring, and so the media won't cover the sort of policies that are just working their way normally through Congress, and he signs them. What the about, conflict what about the criticism for not being able to get um, uh, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema to support a change to the filibuster? Yeah. There's a lot of sturm and drang ab about that directed at the administration, yeah. and obviously some to those two people too, but is there anything he could have done? Well, I think it, and Biden is going to get that, I think, doubly, because he is a man of the Senate. And he did run proclaiming that he could create this bipartisanship and that he could make certain things happen. His long tenure in the Senate is working against him in that sense. Every president says that. They though. all they say that. They that. Oh, I can work. I'll get though. it done, yeah. everybody. But I think I, I, if I had to give one big criticism to the administration, I think they made one big mistake. When you're negotiating, particularly with difficult parties like Joe Manchin, and everybody, you know, he knows Joe Manchin's difficult. He's always been that way. Um, you don't negotiate by saying, let me just give you everything you want. Now, can I get something? They, the one thing he wanted was that infrastructure bill. You gave it to him. What makes you think you have leverage over him now? He's already figured out how they're going to spend that money in West Virginia and what things are going to be named Mansion, Mansion Bridge, Mansion, you know. <laughs> He's already figured out how to spend that money. There's nothing left to give him. He does not want Build Back Better, that's clear. He does not care about the child tax credit. He clearly doesn't care about, you know, anything that's going to help the poor. Like, you know, he's on, a, on his yacht and his Maserati. He doesn't care. So I think that, and that was an administration mistake. They shouldn't have, the idea of negotiating with him by giving him everything he wants and then begging him to help you with the things he doesn't care about, mm -hmm. I think that was a strategic mistake. Now, you, you have said... You're in the third year, well into the third year of your show, and you've often said, quote, scaring is caring. <laughs> what is the line between scaring and uh, providing anxiety to an audience unnecessarily yeah. for the eyeballs? Yeah, and we talk, I mean, this is probably the thing we talk about most during our, our lengthy morning call um, that can go on and on and on because we're, we, we, we really do care about this. What we're talking about. I mean, one of the reasons I love my job is that I'm doing I'm doing and talking about things that I deeply care about. I really am concerned about our democracy, and, and I'm not just saying that to do scary is caring. I'm worried, you know, that we're going to a place in this country that we won't be able to pull back from, and if if we go too far and lose, I mean, democracies fall fast, and they fall when you're not watching and you're not paying attention, and the ways in which our democracy is crumbling, they scare me, right? But we have to give that message out in a way that doesn't make people want to watch the show from under their bed, because that's not healthy. So we try to have a little levity in the show. We try to have a little bit of a light heart in the show. And we try to do some things that are fun, because I think that even when things are bad, you still need to smile, right? You still need, which is why I love your show, which is why I love to watch you. Because um, otherwise, you would crumble. Yeah, no crumbling.
No crumbling. <laughs> no crumbling well, We allowed. can't afford to crumble. We need to be able to fight, right? And, and I think part of the fight is keeping our sense of humor and not letting the forces that want to break us as a country and break our democracy break us personally, right? We need to fight joyfully. Right. You can't be overwhelmed. Yeah. Joy, thank you so much for being here. The Readout airs weeknights on MSNBC. Joy Reid, everybody. We'll be right back with Thomas Middleton.